In this lesson, we're going to learn about radian measurements. Now, up to this point in math, traditionally you've been using degrees when you talk about the size of an angle. But there is another method for talking about these measurements, and that is radians. S to begin with, what is a radian? Well, in this diagram, we have a central arc, or a central angle, that if we were to impose a set of axes on here coincides with the origin. And out on our unit circle we have an intercepted arc. And what radian measurements do is they compare a radius to how many of those radii will fit around the intercepted arc of our unit circle. So it's a percent of that, or a decimal form measurement. And when we start talking about radians, we have to do a comparison of this intercepted arc to the 360 degrees that we know for a full circle. So when we start talking about these comparisons, we have a couple of values that we can use. We know that a full circle is 360 degrees. And that compares directly to our radian measurement, a full circle all the way around is 2 pi radians. If we were to simplify this, we would have 180 degrees over pi radians. And we can use this to convert a radian measurement into degrees. On the other side, we have 2 pi radians is the same thing as 360 degrees. Simplifying this fraction, we have pi radians is 180 degrees. And we can use this to convert back and forth. For instance, if I have an angle measurement of 25 degrees, and I want to convert this into radians, I'm going to take my 25 degrees and multiply it by pi r over 180 degrees. Because I have degrees in both numerator and denominator, they will simplify out to a value of 1. Then it's a matter of simply simplifying this fraction. So we'll have 25 pi radians over 180, and 25 divided by 180 simplifies down into 5 pi 36. When we talk about degrees, we have to put a degree marker. When we talk about radians, we do not need to do this. So we can use these two ratios in order to convert items back and forth between degrees and radians. Let's get a little bit of practice with that. I want us to complete this table of equivalent values. Some we have radian measurements, some we have degrees, and we need to be able to move back and forth. Well, <clears throat> let's start with the radians. If I have radians, this is pi half radians, then I need to be able to multiply this where radians disappear. Because radians are what we're talking about, it's basically in the numerator, I'm going to put my radians in the denominator. So 180 degrees over pi times pi over 2. When we go to simplify this, pi divided by pi is 1. 180 divided by 2 is simply 90 degrees. So we come out with pi half radians is 90 degrees. Let's try the 5 pi fourths. So once again, we have 5 pi over 4 times 180 degrees over pi. <coughs> now when we go to start simplifying, pi divided by pi simplifies to 1. 180 divided by 4 is 45. So when we go to multiply this through, we have 5 times 45, which is 225 degrees. So 5 pi fourths is simply 225 degrees. Now what about the other ones? 
what if I start with 30 degrees? So 30 degrees over 1, I'm going to multiply this by pi over 180 degrees. Simplifying, my degrees simplify each other. Divide both items by 10. 30 divided by 18 simplifies into 1 sixth. So what we come out with is pi sixth radians. What about 120 degrees? Again, 120 degrees over 1 times pi over 180 degrees. My degrees simplify. The zeros, the multiples of 10 will simplify. Then we have 12 eighteenths, which if we were to simplify that fraction, we get 2 thirds. So 120 degrees is 2 pi third radians. Last one up here, 330 degrees. 330 degrees times pi 180 degrees. Our degrees simplify. Multiples of 10 simplify. Then we have 33 eighteenths, both of which are multiples of 3. So when we simplify that away, we end up with 11 6. So we have 11 pi over 6 for the value of 330 degrees. So using these fractions, either 180 over pi or pi over 180, we can convert back and forth between degrees and radians. Then we can use the items of the unit circle that we learned in lesson 13.2 in order to find the values of these. For our degree, 90 degrees, uh, sine value is 1, so the sine of pi half radians is also 1. And we can work through some examples of that during discussion time. But what else can we do with these radians? Let's take a look. In geometry, you're introduced to a concept and formula of an intercepted arc. Now, an intercepted arc as discussed earlier, is when you have an angle opening, where do the two radii intersect the circle? The length of that intercepted arc, S, is in direct relation to that radius. The larger the radius, the longer the distance is to move around the intercepted arc. So S is simply calculated out to be the distance of the radius times the angle measurement in radians. Now we had to do some work in geometry in order to convert that distance into angles, but with radians it's a direct relation. So we have shown below a circle where we know the radius is 3 inches and we have a 5 pi sixth angle and a 2 pi thirds angle and we want to know the length of the intercepted arcs. So let's find S first. S is equal to R times theta. In this case R is 3 inches and theta is 5 pi six. All the thirds and the sixths will simplify giving us 5 pi halves as our distance, then using a calculator we could multiply this out and come up with approximately 7 and 9 tenths of an inch for the length of this intercepted arc. What about B? B will also be R theta, and as we go through and calculate this, our R value is still 3 inches, our theta is 2 pi third. So 3 times 2 pi third is simply going to be 2 pi, and 2 pi is approximately 6 and 3 tenths of an inch. So we can use these values in order to convert back and forth or to find the length of an intercepted arc on the outside of our circle. How can we take this and apply it to more practical matters? 
Let's take a look at such an example. The axial radius of the Earth, or the distance from its rotational core, in Colorado Springs, Colorado is approximately 5,600 kilometers. The city, like all others on the planet, completes one full rotation every 24 hours. How far does the city travel in one hour? In order to calculate this, we are finding an arc length. Our arc length, the distance of the travel, is going to be equal to the radius times the value theta in radians. Our radius is 5,600 kilometers. And our angle measurement in terms of theta, or in terms of radians, our theta value, can be calculated in the following way. Theta is equal to the fraction of the circle that we complete, in this case 1 24th of the circle, because we do a full circle in 24 hours, times the distance around a full circle, which is 2 pi radians. Well, 1 24th times 2 pi is going to give us pi twelfths of that circle. So, we'll take our 5600 kilometers and multiply it by pi twelfths, and when we run these calculations through, we would come up with a distance of 1466 kilometers traveled in that hour. Now, doing a quick conversion from kilometers into miles, this is approximately 911 miles per hour. So, just sitting still, if you're at the latitude, 39 degrees north, of Colorado Springs, Colorado, you would be traveling approximately 911 miles an hour sitting still. So, radian measurements we can use to do a comparison to degree measurements. And the further along we get in math, the more we're going to be working with radians. So make sure you have the concepts down on how to convert these, and we'll become more familiar with them as we continue our study here on periodic functions.